yesterday at the ESL1 LA tournament, OG faced off against Nigma, and normally you would say these are two of the stronger European teams, you would say a fairly even matchup probably. And then you look at the lineups, you see Nigma is playing with their full five man squad, whereas OG has to play with two stand ins. They have Thompson and mid one missing, and they have uh, Seb, of course, their old offlaner, f filling in here, as well as Alliances 33, or actually X Alliances 33. He was just removed from the team in favor of S4, but even though they're playing with these two stand ins, OG are actually going to crush the series. And especially our man here, 33, is going to have two really strong games, playing two of his uh, favorite heroes, like in the first game and then a code gen in the second game. So I'm going to cover both these games. Uh, the other one is going to be out uh, probably tomorrow. So in this first game, he's playing Lycan here in the safe lane together with uh, uh, No Tails Keeper of the Light. And this, of course, means that you're going to have plenty of mana to play around with. And this also means that in this game, he's actually going to skill Howl at level 2. Usually, would always go for Feral Impulse just for the extra sustain, and just because you can't really afford both these spells mana wise. But uh, in this game, he has the Cottle to give him mana, so he can afford to skill Howl, which is a much stronger fighting ability. And so in the start of this lane, they're having a bit of problems here. Notel is getting quite low. Notel almost dies here. Barely escapes thanks to the high speed that Cottle has. And just keeps. Actually, now he dies. Uh, GH coming in there for the snipe, gets the first blood. So, not an easy lane here. But as Lycan, it's kind of okay not to have the best lane because you have a lot of sustain and uh, you're not really looking to play aggressively anyway. You're just looking to get your levels and uh, get a, a reasonable timing on your first item, which usually is going to be a Dominator, but he is going straight for the Necro, and even going to go straight for the Necro 3, which in this game makes a lot of sense, because they're playing against two Invis heroes, they're playing against this Bounty Hunter, as well as this Nyx, so having an early Necro 3 is uh, a lot of value. But personally, I'm, I'm such a big fan of Dominate, I will still even go Dominate even in this game. Uh, but 33 disagrees here, and uh, he's the pro here, so I'm going to go with his opinion. Um, and they also have this uh, Brewmaster here in the bottom lane, who is another of these uh, strong offlaners in this patch. Used to be a very obscure hero that uh, was kind of weak, but has been buffed a lot in 725, so now we see a bit more of him. And uh, he's also supported by Grimstruck, of course there's a very solid uh, support, played in the person 4 role here by Saxa. And then in the mid lane they have the Sumail Ember Spirit, a very strong hero, just a well run hero of course in general, um, up against this uh, Timbersaw. And we see that uh, Nigma as well as OG are both playing very high tempo lineups, and you can also see this Bounty Hunter here. Uh, so actually, I think a first, second pick Bounty Hunter, and usually these days he's a Bounty Hunter played in position 3 role, but actually here we see a position 5 Bounty Hunter coming in, and he's just being really, really annoying. He's cancelled one south for Sumail, and now Sumail springs of a uh, courier actually walking here to prevent the courier snipe, and another south gets cancelled, so Sumail is quite sad here. But speaking of sad, uh, Monkey is also really sad. He's being run down here by this uh, dual lane of OG. He makes it out badly, but he's out of region, he is out of HP, and um, he escapes uh, from this uh, uh, struggle of fate here from Grimstroke, but uh, this is not a good position to be in. And of course, the reason he's doing so badly is because this bounty hunter is roaming around, and he just has to play this one with his two lane, and Brumas is quite a strong laner. So... Uh, Beastmaster is one of the strongest offlaners in this current patch, probably the strongest offlaner in the whole, but he's not a hero who does really well if, if he gets uh, sacrificed. He's more of an aggressive laner, you can run people down with your balls, but if you're playing from behind, these balls are not very strong, so Mankaron is going to have a terrible time in this game. You see the net worth here, he's uh, 
uh, almost lowest net worth here. He's uh, less than half the net worth of Seb. So, um, not a good place to be in. And when I first saw this game on stream, I immediately knew I had to cover this. Just because there's such a high density of these cool micro heroes, which of course this channel is all about. So you have the Lycan and the Brewmaster is kind of a, a micro hero. He has of course micro units with his uh, ultimate. And then on the Radiant side, on Nigma, we see the Nature's Prophet actually played in the carry role here. Very interesting, very spicy, very high tempo um, sort of um, Dota. And then of course we have the Beastmaster, who as I said is probably the strongest uh, offlaner right now. And definitely need to make another video on uh, Beastmaster sometime soon. But the main hero we're focusing on here is uh, 33, who is playing Lycan, of course. Uh, one of the most passive laners in the game. So not really too much interesting things happening here in the laning phase. Nigma pressuring a lot with the uh, three heroes up here right now. And of course Nigel Spot one of the strongest laners in the game. So 33 suffering a bit here, but uh, this is fine. He can just uh, uh, escape here and you see rotation coming in from Brewmaster. He's level 6, he uses his ultimate immediately. And uh, he doesn't actually catch anyone here. Um, and his Prophet escaping here. I probably could be using the Cyclone a bit more. Um, it's like Cycloning and then Dispelling once you've caught, caught up here. And so this Prophet is actually going to get away. Uh, no level 6 yet on that Lycan, so we can't really chase here. And in the meantime, Nota was actually chased down by the Treants and by Kuroki's Bounty Hunter. So, um, good exchange here for Nigma, uh, but even so, OG is uh, slightly ahead in net worth, and the big reason for that is just mind control is struggling so much. He's now level 6, but he's still incredibly poor. So, 33 is now level 6, and this is kind of where the game really starts with Lycan. He also finishes Necro. Uh, typically, at this timing, you would instead have the Dominator, which would allow you to pick up uh, one of these creeps. Uh, uh, ideally a centaur, just allowing you to stun, have some control. Um, but he has a necro book and he's being gone on here by Bounty Hunter and uh, Nyx. Uh, actually Nyx should have mana burned uh, first here and then probably he wouldn't even be able to get off this uh, necro because now it costs 150 mana. Um, but he gets off the necro and they just have to back off. This Lycan is quite tanky. The necro book also gives you a lot of strength so it's not easy to kill this Lycan, but of course it's annoying. Um, but now he has this Necro out, and Necro 1 is one of the strongest farming items in the game right now. It's an item that's even been bought on carries like Spectre, and of course on Lycan it's a natural fit. It just uh, allows you to farm so well. Actually a better farming item than Dominator, just because these uh, uh, Necro units deal piercing damage, they're really good against neutral units. And uh, as well as against lane creeps, but um, of course you don't have as much kill potential with Necro 1 as you would with a Dominator if you get a good creep. If you get a Centaur, you just have so much more kill potential because of that stomp uh, in your ultimate form. And Lycan finds a, a Cane Ring here, which is an excellent item on your hero, really solves your mana problems. There's a Cane Ring, if you use it constantly, it gives you in total uh, the equivalent of uh, something like uh, 2.4 mana per second. Uh, so that's uh, huge. Also gives some some armor, which is important because wolves do need armor. And also, of course, has his buckler uh, for uh, for his own hero as well as for his wolves. These wolves have uh, zero armor, so every point of armor you get for them is very important. So Nigma want to put pressure onto this tower, force this lichen to come out of the jungle, and we see rotations coming in here, and Nigma, Nigma just scramble. They want to escape here, but man control is hiding quite well here. Um, you can see they don't see him yet, but now they see him, and so he is going to uh, be run down here. But he's going to escape here with the face movements coming out from Primal Roar, and <laughs> unfortunately these wolves kind of blocking him, and he has to cut a tree out here. He's been getting slowed here, but. Uh, there's all these annoying units, all these treants here, and they don't, don't quite manage to catch him. And Lycan, uh, once your shapeshift runs out, you just can't really chase people because you have no boots. 
and Lycan. Some people just skip boots entirely, uh, others uh, go for boots later, but uh, you're never going to see early boots on Lycan uh, un unless you're playing some very particular matchup. But on Lycan, because of your ultimate, you just get max movement speed anyway, you want to delay your boots uh, quite a bit or even skip them entirely. Um, so in this game, you're going to see he's going to go for a Necro 3 and I think then he's going to go for boots. Nigma pushing into this tier 1 tower in the middle and OG want to respawn. They have ultimate up again on, on uh, Lycan. They also have Villa Wisp. So this Timbersaw, even the Timbersaw of course is very tanky here at this stage of the game. If 5 heroes well on him, he is going to die eventually. And he's just being silenced, he's being uh, uh, disabled by this uh, Ignis Fasus and he goes down. Very important to bring down this Timbersaw at some point in the game uh, to just stop him from, from snowballing. And meanwhile Sumail is just hunting people, Seb also helping out here and that is a dead GH and Sumail is on a mega kill streak. He's just doing really well with his Ember Spirit. Going for a very aggressive build here. Um, he's going for the Phase Boots, Urn of Shadows, into the Spirit Vessel. If you're facing up against a hero like Timbersaw, who really relies on his region, uh, it's just very important to get an early Vessel up. And in this lineup, I mean, suppose the Brewmaster could go for a Vessel, but really, ideally, Ember Spirit is a much better hero for this Vessel. So he's just going to go for this Vessel on this position to um, Ember Spirit. It's just really important to get this vessel early, so definitely get another core here. And now they're chasing down. Uh, early in that fight, that we didn't actually pop his ultimate, because this um, uh, Timbers was disabled anyway, you don't really need the ultimate. So now he has the ultimate, and they're chasing people down, but not really getting too much here. But Timbers are once again being disabled, and just veiled on, and they just kill him. Timbersaw is tanky, but it's not that tanky. If five uh, people focus you, you still die. And so they just fall apart here. Ligma just don't really have any way of responding to all this aggression here. And um, Lycan, with his book 3 now out, just does so much damage. And we see the next item he's going to go for is actually going to be a drum. And this is a really strong item on Lycan, I think very much under bars because you have this uh, aura coming out from, from Fairy Elm Plus, which gives you a lot of bonus damage. And then you normally also have your Dominator. In this game, I think it's going to get the Dominator after the drum. Um, but like eventually you want to have a Dominator, just for the, for the aura and the utility offered by the creeps. And so you have all this bonus damage, but you're lacking attack speed. So uh, drum with an attack speed bonus is a really really strong item on Lycan and it's just a strong sort of timing push kind of item because uh, as long as you have charges on it it just gives so much bang for its buck uh, it, it's just such an efficient item and they want to hit this mid game timing they want to run Nigma over and so drum is a really strong item for these purposes and now they're into Roche they have this Villa Wisp so they can always, if if the fight goes bad, they can always just use Villa Wisp and then just retreat. There's not that much chasing potential on, on Nigma. Uh, so this is fine. This is a fairly low risk kind of play. Uh, Nigma are forced to respond here and they're kind of weaker now, so they don't really want to fight, but they kind of have to. So they chase OG out of the Roche pit, which is nice enough. But it's like no, not much damage done here. They have this Vlad on, on Brewmaster. So they can do this Roshan without really taking damage. And that's important. If, if you're doing this Roshan without Vlad, it would be a quite a risky play because then you get no and then there's a chance that the enemy just takes a really good fight against you. But if you have this Vlad, if you have all the sustain coming out, uh, this is a completely fine play to make. And of course in Brewmaster, you're the hero that uh, has his ultimate where you, most of your items don't really work but all items still work so that's why you often see these um, flats being bought on Brewmaster he's even queuing up an AC here yeah it looks like I lied about those boots maybe I'm misremembering here um, so he's getting drums before boots but okay now he gets the boots so there we are uh, so at some point I think it's definitely good to get boots 
it's just an efficient item for moving around uh, in your non ultimate form and just you're still not going to be very strong in fights uh, uh, without shapeshift you still can't really chase people down but at least you're not quite as uh, as much of a snail and um, it, with the boots and the drums you're actually kind of reasonably fast even outside of ultimate so that's nice you see this um, beastmaster he tps out so kind of a wasted ultimate here but of course uh, this uh, new lycan the ultimate lasts quite long so at least you can sort of chase down these necro units from uh, beastmaster and he clears those up those don't give as much gold as you used to but at least uh, it stops the um, beastmaster for farming OG want to start another fight they're very strong so they think that even though our lycan doesn't have ultimate we can still take this fight of course uh, they have this little wrist one of the strongest team fight uh, ultimates in the game and they try to take this fight but they're not really fighting too much here and this beastmaster is getting really very low um, but with a nice roar he managed to escape and now we see lycan of course coming back in even though they have ultimate uh, you still want to join these team fights if they're nearby like if this fight happens down here uh, like somewhere down here in the bottom lane uh, you don't change join this fight of course but since it's very nearby uh, you might as well join here and they get these two kills don't really lose very much and um, now they can maybe look for this Roshan one thing they're lacking here is a medallion it would be very nice to pick up a medallion here maybe on Saxa um, would make this Roshan go a lot faster but as it is they just have to um, do this slowly and they find a bounty hunter running into them and um, we are of course also getting in here, gets a kill, but Miracle is out of position and that's one of the problems with this position 1 Aegis Prophet. Um, yeah, with Desolate and so on you do a decent amount of damage, but at the end of the day you can still be run down quite easily and um, if you're playing against uh, this Lycan, if you're playing against uh, Brewmaster, if you're playing against uh, this uh, very farmed Ember Spirit, it's very very difficult to uh, to actually play latest profit in this game. With Roshan secured, we see when 3 actually just uh, running here in the Timbersaw. Timbersaw is a bit far forward here. They just go on him and they are just going to kill him again. Timbersaw in a game where he's not feeling tanky is just uh, the most pathetic hero. So we can easily just kill him over and over again. We see some deep warning here happening with that uh, Necro 3, of course, one of the strong side benefits of this uh, upgrade um, as well as of course just the security that you're always going to be able to see this uh, bounty hunter and this next assassin when they run in 33 is doing some cheeky split pushing and in the meantime they just got another kill on Kuro in the mid lane but 33 is in trouble he doesn't have ultimate yet but his team are coming and uh, trying to rescue him and at this stage of the game OG is much stronger than Enigma, so they can take this fight. Um, 33 survives and they kill off the Simbazo once again. And uh, what was supposed to be a gank here turned out into a bad team fight. And Enigma lose to heroes across the map. So, what you want to do now in this stage of the game is uh, take out as many of these outer towers as possible. And then you just choke out the enemy and uh, um, force them to stay in their base or get killed. And so they're now sieging this uh, tier 2 tower at the bottom. Um, 33, of course, transforms again here. They just run it whenever here when they see. They're just much stronger and they're much faster. They can just run at people. Miracle tries to TP out here and it's going to be successful. But um, like they're not really getting much done. They're doing some split pushing at top. If you look at the towers, actually, uh, Nigma are doing better overall uh, because they have these uh, strong split push heroes the prophet and uh, that beastmaster but it's just uh, in terms of net worth they're just so far behind so it's just not really enough to take out some of the outer towers and now that OG uh, have this huge net worth lead they can just push one tower after the other and um, then others just go straight high ground um, or just uh, uh, suffocate the enemy and uh, uh, stop them from uh, leaving their base. Uh, only other towers left are top lane, so um, 
that is uh, often what I'm gonna go for next. But uh, pushing in the safe lane is often kind of a waste. But, like these towers don't really control very much of the map. Like they control like this part of the map or something like that. And they control like one or two camps. And they're just not that valuable, these towers. So oftentimes you see these towers being pushed in last and even people go high ground before these towers are gone. But here in this game, um, we see OG just uh, running in here, trying to get some kills, but uh, actually overextending. And um, Nigma launched a major comeback here. Uh, that's a more than 2k gold swing. And that just, it's just important not to get overconfident here. And 33 is just doing some farming. He finds the spider legs. He returns for it. Um, but he's being ganked here. And uh, like the really pro high level play here would be to um, drop the dragon skeleton before he picks up the spider legs and then have the spider legs active right away. And he could have run up here. Um, but uh, yeah, that's not uh, easy to have that presence of mind. And um, unfortunately, uh, he also dies. So now the net worth lead is down to 8k. And maybe Nigma can make some sort of comeback. And OG playing so aggressively, they don't really care that their carry is dead right now. They're still finding this bounty hunter and uh, kill him. And by the way, I really like Sumer's item build. The face boots for the great mobility and uh, damage. And the spirit vessel, we talked about that earlier. It's just really important to have a spirit vessel up when you're playing in Simbasaur. And then he goes straight into the Radiance. So we go for this uh, very fighting, active kind of build, um, you know, face boots, vessel, and then to be able to actually deal damage and scale into the late game, he goes for this Radiance, of course helps out a lot against uh, all these uh, summons as well. And right here he's getting a bit overconfident, so even though G playing this very high tempo, very aggressive style of Dota, sometimes they overextend. And you know, like... Uh, um, four times out of five, they look end up looking like geniuses with these uh, really aggressive moves, but uh, occasionally they just see these really goofy moves, like him walking uphill and just uh, getting killed, um, just as it was praising his item build. But um, you know we have to take it the good with the bad. Another fight here, and uh, once again 33 running in here, going for the most important target here, the Nature's Prophet, the enemy carry that's really vulnerable to being run at. Um, but with him gone, he's just gonna go for whatever targets he can find. Uh, it's important to go know for which targets you wanna go for. Uh, usually, you wanna go for supports. Uh, these are usually the easiest to kill. But if you have like a vulnerable kind of uh, core on the enemy team, something like an HS Prophet, like a Sniper, these kind of heroes that can't really defend themselves when you run at them, uh, these are your highest priority targets if you can find them. And with all the feeding that OG have been doing in the last couple of minutes, the net worth lead is actually down to 6k. So now this is uh, very manageable actually. It's still possible now for Ligma to make some sort of comeback. But of course the problem is that they have this very aggressive lineup. They have this uh, Nature's Prophet who is very uh, aggressive for, for a uh, carry hero. And he's also gone for this Desolator build which is great for early game fighting. But doesn't really answer too well to farming. As well as this you know, BKB second item, then AC. It's a very aggressive build and to do this and he's still behind it's kind of difficult to actually catch up. And another fight here going poorly for um, for Nigma. This Timbersaw with a vessel just is not very tanky at all. And so they just slowly run him down, chase him down, give him another slap here. Um, but he's kind of sort of making his escape but uh, uh, OG is just so mobile and they eventually Managed to uh, catch him and kill him. And Kuroki just runs into one sentry after the other. Um, it's gonna escape this time, but like this bounty hunter just hasn't done anything. There's a reason we don't really see this hero played very often as a support these days. I think it's just much better as a core, specifically as an offlaner in particular matchups. But as a person 5, I think just he doesn't really offer that much. Meanwhile, Ojia moving in here. Uh, they have, actually this is not ultimate, <laughs> uh, just the reaper block, still has shape available. So they're going high ground here, there's two heroes dead, they have a catapult, they're 45 to protect their own creep wave. And uh, GH is in the wrong neighborhood, but he gets four staff, so he'll of himself. And um, Ignis being used here, very deep, and uh, it's just not really possible for Enigma to defend these Raxes. And very importantly, 33 
held his ultimate during all this push. Your ultimate doesn't actually help you hit buildings at all. All it does is gives you extra movement speed, it gives you crit, which doesn't work on his buildings. So now he still has the ultimate, he's running in here, he's chasing people down, and not really finding anything quite yet. Um, but it was a good, good attempt here, and at least this way they get a clean retreat and get out without losing anything. Um, actually, uh, Beastmaster uh, dying here to Zeb's Brewmaster. Uh, in the bottom lane, doing some split pushing. Um, so, well done, Zeb. In terms of item builds, we see an Abyssal Blade coming out of this Lycan. There's not too much magic damage, not too much disable coming out of the enemy team. So, you don't really need a BKB in this game. At least, not yet. So, he's just gone for this greedier version of the Abyssal Blade. Uh, if there was no AC in the team, you probably would get that, but uh, you're the brew already getting AC, so um, this Abyssal is the next best thing, gives you some more control, it's just a really strong item right now. And um, brew, as I said, went for AC, also not getting a uh, BKB, that's just not too much disabled in the enemy team, you don't need that BKB. Uh, typically, of course, on, on, B on Brewmaster you would have a BKB at this point in the game, just to be able to ensure that you get off your ultimates. Um, but here it's not, not necessary, and uh, they can just go for these uh, greedy items. And second is Rex being taken here, and this is uh, pretty much uh, a dual die here for Nigma. They need to win a fight right now, get some exit kills, but um, uh, on the contrary, it's actually OG who are getting all the kills. And this is going to be the end of the game, just really nice, clean, actually not quite clean, they had some, some feeding moments here in the middle of that game, but uh, for the most part just really strong, aggressive Dota coming in for G. It's really a joy to watch and um, I'm looking forward to covering the next game where we're going to see a, a 33 uh, core Chen being played and it's going to be a game that's going to be even more one-sided. So. Um, Look forward to that, and uh, if you don't want to miss that, uh, please subscribe to this channel, hit the bell button so you get notified when I put when I post that next uh, video. And in the meantime, I hope you have a good day, and always willing. I'll see you next time.